the first Organ Commission Management Committee of uh, this, this uh, year. First off, I'd just uh, welcome Councillor Angie Davis and Councillor Phil Wilkes to the committee. Uh, you'll enjoy yourself in the second one. Item 1. Declarations of interest. Has anyone got any? Item 2. Minutes. Could you have to see the minutes have been held on the 18th of March? Three. Uh, the year 
dealing with workers who are assessing or reporting on that, uh, there have been internal reports that have been brought and um, within those reports will be reference made to work that we've undertaken um, to corroborate the systems in place for the write off of these accounts uh, and to make sure that the system will be compliant by the relevant officers. And then the relevant reports will be going to the appropriate committees and that's just before those uh, write offs were signed and sort of passed through those accounts. It does have a link to uh, the question that was down on the page says, does the audit committee consider specifically what we call bullet point large write offs and therefore we clear that we specifically consider particular ones even though they're contained in documents? Through you, Chair. Uh, perhaps on reflection, the maybe should have been some analysis in there alongside that question to explain the role of this committee in this particular council and how we would operate. So, the, the self assessment is a typical document, something, uh, and it's been lifted per se, maybe like something else. So it, it doesn't drill down to that sort of level either. So maybe when the chair and myself sat down and went through the self assessment, we maybe could perhaps then have taken something to reflect the way that this committee and its involvement in that particular process. That can be easily adjusted. Thank you. Ron? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, I think all my years on this committee of my life, I don't actually ever remember a major write-up of the coming before this committee. So I think it may be just the way a lapse of the paragraph needs to be readjusted. It, it wouldn't come here. It would be a cabinet decision with council suddenly found itself writing on a million pounds, which I would believe would be a lot of write-up. In fact, we don't even get the minute time because what we're here to see is the process done correctly to ensure that the write-up in the, in the first place is, is correct and accurate uh, and that's what our role is. Our role is not to, to go into the minutiae of why a particular write-up is being applied by the cabinet. I think it, it's, it's how we just clarify that particular word because it may be in some, some word in, in the annals of some council that actually happens but it doesn't, that's not the system that happens here. The internal audit will pick it up report it to us, and then we would then report an issue to come out uh, as a way of our check and balances in the process. I don't think we would be specifically looking for that. That's a lot of internal audit to have to pick that up. But as I say, in my knowledge, and all the time I've been, I've been on a number of years on this committee, I can never remember that aspect of the report as well in any format. Thank you. 
have to address the social conflicts with yourself. So just kind of say, well, I think actually, Chad, I did ask that question at the previous meeting, but I was mentioning that the members of the people who knew to the committee that was still on the national side. Thank you for that. Thanks, David. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a really quick point, really. I mean, again, it's really interesting to report and put together. Um, obviously, we're aware of lots of those things, and we've got the hindsight experience, we know they're the case. I just wondered if anyone externally was looking at this document, and um, whether in the comments slash actions got an element of evidence that would be very worthwhile, either someone else has validated that that's the case, or uh, yes, this is the meeting they attended. I think that would be a useful um, addition to the document. The evidence is available, readily available, so we can sort of, uh, what I'll do is, if you do a like I can update the document to reflect your comments before we get to the cabinet, so we approve it straight away. Thank you. 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 Thank This is a regular report that we present to yourselves. Um, it contains the uh, summary of the, the work of the internal audit section for the period 1st of March to the 20th of May this year. The report concentrates on identifying any items of note or items that have been escalated from the monthly reports that you get uh, directed to yourselves. We'll provide some performance based items for the delivery of the internal audit service. I'll identify uh, some improvements that have been taking place over the last two months or so. The attention was specifically drawn to section 2.2 on page 1 of the actual report, it's 45, page 45 of the report, uh, where there are a couple of items of note that I feel worthy of your attention uh, for this period. The first one relates to a piece of work that was undertaken on uh, attendance management. This was a request that came from the head of HR. Um, I'm basically asking if we could review the council's arrangement for attendance management. Um, this being one of their key core objectives of the year, uh, and she felt that there were some, uh, there were some issues that, that were possibly in evidence that, that she wanted us to sort of look into in some way in relation to. The other, I did identify uh, some areas for improvement regarding the accuracy and the completeness of the data uh, that was maintained and included within the online systems. Uh, four actions uh, have been agreed and identified and agreed with the, uh, the development manager. And there's a timetable for implementation which I'm sort of very comfortable with. What I will do is uh, we'll schedule some follow-up work for uh, a couple months' time to see how those sort of uh, what works we've made to address those actions. I'll bring sort of uh, follow-up reports to yourself that uh, give you more details related to what I'm doing now. The second item relates to the schools or the work that we're going to take during the year. Uh, and it was really just to sort of let you know that all the follow-up work that we're going to take in the all of the actions that have been agreed to address issues in relation to the schools of work for the whole year have now been implemented by the command. So there's sort of pretty little help across that. The attention is also drawn to section 2.3 of the report where the table identifying information relating to those audits where recommended actions included in the report uh, could be not been implemented to date. The table uh, is attached to appendix 1. All the recommendations that are currently included within that report at this point in time are related to being in progress within the agreed time scales. Although the results of work that's currently being undertaken and have been undertaken since the report actually sort of went to two press, quite a number of those amber rated items will now tend to be following the certificate and follow up that we're going to I'll provide you with an update on that via the, uh, the monthly report that goes out to themselves. Section 2.4 uh, identify information related to performance in general audit service. And you will note that this uh, it's a fairly early stage of the year that I've got sort of got on target to deliver that with the plan. Feedback from clients and management remains good with all the key actions identified on the reports being agreed, and the client satisfaction levels remain consistently high, which is very encouraging. Section 2.5 of the report identifies some of the continuing improvements that have been made to delivering the service. You would call our agreement sort of regularly and um, we'll constantly be evaluating, we'll constantly be visiting how we go about delivering the service, we're constantly looking at others to see how we can sort of improve and tweak what we do and how we do it in a sort of smart and more effective way. There are just a few examples that I've identified there just to sort of keep you sort of up to speed with regards to sort of how to do it. Um, that's probably as much as 
no need to say on the report, but I'm very happy to take these questions. Oh. Yeah, I've got
So consequently, there have been work on this in the last two weeks. One of those is a work to take on prevention. There's a draft report at the moment that's currently being discussed with the head of IT skills in light in relation to the following measures undertaken. That will come back to this committee. Uh, initially, it will come via the report that I sent you to directly by the email that will lead to the next the work undertaken, what the findings were. And then from September, I can provide you with a bit more detail in relation to the precise nature of the work and what grounds you can make to address those issues. The third point you raised in relation to having somebody from head of ITCS coming along to sort of review on a number of issues that, that I mean, there is a theme you'll know from 70 page 53. There are three, four items identified there, all of that IT related nature, all with potentially outstanding recommendations that we make that, that haven't been addressed for one or another. Now, there have been issues that we've discussed with head of IT in relation to resourcing. There have been major projects on the way that have taken some of the resources away from some of these areas, but I think you're right in that uh, it would be a very good idea to have the head of IT services here. We'll be talking through what work has been done today, what plans are in the uh, in the offing and what's been done to sort of mitigate some of the risk in these areas in the interim. So I think the September meeting would be an excellent opportunity to do just that. So I would endorse that. Yeah. Um, I just because obviously the areas I have been
and then that vehicle will be what I use to relate to what progress is being made by the Section 2 for each of these 
areas, including identification for progress made from the year to approve arrangements of page 5 or 65 of the uh, committee paper. One of the areas that significantly informs my opinion is the outcomes of the audit involving the funded and financial systems. You'll note from the table included in section 2.6 that all of these systems have been assessed as either by a substantial or maximum opinion for the effectiveness of the program. This is very encouraging like that, uh, and it's good news. Um, these are good opinions like that, and they need to be because this is an important aspect of the overall opinion that we have A full breakdown of the opinions we provided in the open reports, including on pages 3 and 11 of my report, in 71 of the committee papers. I'll just identify some quite interesting and very uh, encouraging statistics in relation to the opinions that we provide during the year. Uh, it does, to me, indicate that management clearly have a better understanding of controls and the need for control and balance to be strong and effective and provide the responses that are needed. Um, if I can just sort of highlight some of the key stats that the subject has for me when I was carrying the report. 80% of those reports that we produced include opinions that were of a substantial or maximum nature, which is the two highest categories, compared to 60% this time last year. Um, the significant reduction in the percentage of audits identifying minimum opinions from 27% this time last year down to 2% this year. That perhaps more than anything is the one thing that really struck me about it. and again is very encouraging. There's an increase in the number of audits identifying substantial opinions for 29% to 48%. Section 3 of the report, I uh, provide further analysis uh, in the breakdown of those reports identifying maximum and opinions to the senior individual reports uh, identifying which opinions. At section 3.4, I go into a little more detail in relation to those audits where there were limited or minimum opinions provided. This includes within its comments identifying actions taken in year to address those reported issues. In all of these cases, management have taken appropriate action and approved it in front of our place. It must also be mentioned that quite a number of these uh, assignments are actually requested by and commissioned by individual chief officers anxious to sort of try and ensure that those systems were becoming more effective control and more provided the system. Section 4 identifies how the internal audit service itself complies with the requirements of the CIPRA code and the new public sector internal audit standards. This is page 19 or 79 of your committee papers. Um, and what I do in there is also explain some of the developments that have taken place during the year to improve the current arrangements to ensure that we continue to comply with the sort of uh, not just the old code practice but the new public sector internal audit standards which are on their way now when we sort of on this process here in 2013, there's a five year sort of reading time to comply with that. So, well, well, I think you might recall my broad report that in the year where I think we were 18, 26, 27, 79, but now there were a couple of initiatives on the way across the region right now that we were sort of uh, tapping into in relation to the equality of your own. So, um, I'll throw myself a I do also include some performance data in section 4.3, which presents a very positive picture of how the internal service is now being delivered. This is a page, uh, it's one of the committee pages. Um, it does include some feedback and comments taken from client satisfaction and survey form, which accompany each and every uh, piece of work that we undertake. And there are some comments there that were provided by yourselves. Improvements will continue to take place as we move forward. Um, we must ensure that the service continues to comply with what is effectively sort of developing best practice. Uh, the new standards push us more than ever uh, before uh, are very, um, very challenging, shall we say, that, but will certainly result in a much more efficient, effective service. Um, I don't think I probably need to say too much more than that at this stage, but I'm very happy.
make your plans in relation to the follow-up that we put. I don't think it'd be a bad idea to say that. Well, I, 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 to, to you, Chair, I would make that when we make another very request to the director of social services to check on all your appropriate persons to present how you pose an answer. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just on that same day, of course, the second night of time, I'm getting paranoid over the security of communication. This is a genuine concern of mine, Mark, and you've got down there that under that three to four section, serious weaknesses you've identified, and the mobile device security is one of them again. I'm wondering how that could possibly have been compromised, or what the likelihood of being compromised, or how it would be compromised. I think we need to understand what could have gone wrong, what did go wrong, and what happened. I will have, I mean, there's nothing in here that hasn't been reported yourself, so I will have brought a report during the course of the year identifying the specific edge of the issues that double flag at the time. Um, we certainly will have identified actions that have been taken, and I'm aware that actions are not being taken. Um, we have talked about the uh, of like the services coming along next meeting this falls within his remit, so we're going to find a lot more detail regarding that report is support and that has happened to the rest of the Thank you. Sorry, could you could you move the microphone closer? We we can't quite get. Oh, just move it closer. Thanks. Is that better? Yeah, I can hear you now. Um, points of particular include the uh, tender for the station services, which will have a major influence on the outcome of uh, liability claims in the forthcoming years. Um, the shortlisting of team member Sam Hutchinson, who is actually sitting to my left this evening. And for Professional of the Year uh, in the country. Um, and discussions uh, that are taking place around an approach to define the council's appetite for risk in relation to the, the new corporate plan. Um, those discussions will inform an exercise that will take place with members of Cabinet and with the strategic leadership team uh, later in the year. That was always been a highlight, but I'm very happy to take any questions. Right. Well, yeah, once again, I have just a couple of questions. Uh, one I basically remember 2.2 points <coughs> each. Um, I would like to welcome the additional uh, screws that have been put in place, but could we have a report back and say it is in place? I would be very happy here. The first of those reports is supposed to go in September, so I'm not quite sure how they're aligned with. Um, well, there's a the first appropriate reason you should bring it back. I'm very happy to point out. It's not like something that, uh, you know, <coughs> it's something that you should be aware of as a committee, which is one of the reasons are being processed at the start here. And I think mean, maybe we'll sort of need to do to see what these things are now start being fulfilled. And that's part of what I was trying to say in the past one, the tracking system. When we make a recommendation, we know it goes somewhere, we know it's been action. It's that type of thing when you come back and report say we have an action. It gives us the security we are doing our job and our job is getting done for the work we should be.